Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna be doing an overclock on a 6700 XT, but this should really apply in general to any AMD 6000 series. We're gonna be using AMD's Radeon Adrenaline software to do the overclocking. To start off, we're gonna to wanna to get a base score. We're gonna use Time Spy. And as you've seen on the screen there, that was our base score. And once you open up your Adrenaline software, you're going to want to go to the performance and then the tuning tab. And then you're going to wanna to click on the custom button there. And you're going to want to enable your power tuning, your GPU tuning, and your fan tuning as well as all the um, advanced options for those features. And the reason we're gonna do that, that's a good place to start. First off, we're gonna get our fans up to 100% speed. Um, remember to apply changes after you do all this. You put your power limit right to uh, max, whatever that is. It will vary for GPU to GPU. Um, for the testing, we're going to be, have all our fans at 100% for now, and we can, we'll change that later and set up a fan curve, and I'll teach you guys how to do that. But for right now, we're going to go with 100% fans, and if you set your minimum fan to 100% and click apply, it'll get them all to 100% there. And what you're going to want to do is set your, um, on the GPU tuning, you're going to want to put your max frequency up higher than you think that your uh, GPU is capable of. And you're going to leave your min frequency for right now. And then we're going to run Time Spy, where I, th I, I don't think this one's going to hit 2800, so that's why I'm going with 2800. Um, and then we're going to run Time Spy, and we're going to see what our... Um, average clock speed is there and then we will adjust from there um, we'll find out what our average clock speed is and then we're gonna want a hundred megahertz above that and a hundred megahertz below that and on this particular GPU it was 2684 is where it was hitting and so I ended up setting the um, minimum to 2600 and leaving the max at 2800 and running the test that way and seeing how that would do and got a pretty good score um, I think the score at the end there was a you'll see the score at the end here but it was a 12500 I was scoring the 12500s, but then I, I targeted in the um, the megahertz a little closer. I bumped it up to uh, 20, I left it at 2600, but I took the max down to 2715 to see if that would give me a better score, and it did not. It gave me uh, about 200 points less, and so it's going to depend on GPU. Some are gonna like a 200 megahertz um, window, and some will like a 100 megahertz window. You're gonna have to test it and find out. Um, but this one, this particular one, liked a 200 megahertz window. So once you got that figured out, though, where your GPU likes it, like I said, you just keep doing time spy testing and see where it gets to. Once you got that figured out, then, then you're gonna move on to your VRAM timing. So with the VRAM timing, it's gonna be the same thing. You're going to just enable your uh, VRAM tuning down there, and you're going to want to enable any advanced options as you that you have as well. Um, I tried to do the fast memory timing on this particular GPU, you couldn't get it above 50 megahertz with the, the fast memory timing enabled, and then it would crash on me. So um, I wouldn't even use it on this particular GPU. Some GPUs, I've had a 6500 XT where you can bump it all the way up with fast timings and it didn't matter, it, it would stay stable. 
it, it's, it varies from GPU to GPU. Um, on this particular one, it doesn't work out so well. You can, it only overclocks to 150 megahertz. Um, and this particular GPU would seem to be stable there. I backed it off to 2140, so 140 megahertz above. And that's just for stability because this is a customer's and I just want to make sure that it's stable. But you can definitely, if yours can handle it, you can definitely do that. Um, the only real way to test if GPU is overclock is stable or not is just by uh, playing games with it, really. Um, and I'm not going to play a bunch of games with this guy's computer. I did a bunch of um, benchmarking to make sure that it's it seems stable, but that's as far as I'm going to go. But now, once you have your VRAM timing all done, you're going to want to work on your uh, fan curve. Um, again, you're going to want to test this with TimeSpy after you set your VRAM just to make sure that you actually got some gains from doing this and it wasn't for nothing. And that it's, um, you're, you're not going to know if it's stable or not until, like I said, until you play games. And then if it turns out that it's not stable, how you determine whether it's your VRAM or your clock speed is you would just disable one of them and play that game that it crashed on and see if it crashes again. And if it doesn't, then it's the one you disabled. If not, if it's still continuing to crash, it's either the one you didn't disable or both of them. But then you would start with the one you didn't disable. You would bring the clocks down on that play the game again, see if it didn't crash. If it didn't, then you would, uh, you know, enable your clock speeds again or whatever one that you didn't have enabled before and adjust from there and see if it crashes. Um, but now we're working on the fan curve. Sometimes, now we were running at 100% this whole time. Now, once you have everything set, you're gonna wanna drop those fan speeds down to 90%. And the reason you're gonna do that is because you might actually, the board might need power in other places besides the fan. And so by doing that, you might actually gain, um, which we did in this case. Um, it, I gained about 200 points in Time Spy. I'll show you the Time Spy scores at the end because the, the board is using that power in a different place. So sometimes you're gonna wanna bring that down. Once you find out where that target is, if you don't mind fan noise, you can leave it at 90% all the time if you like. Um, this is a customer's computer, so as you can see, I built the fan curve in there. It starts out at 50%, and the reason I started there is because the fan's not too loud there, but it is doing a significant amount of cooling, and it's easier to keep things cool than it is to cool things off. So by starting out at a high level there, where it's not very audible, it'll actually Keep it not audible for longer and you'll get better clock speeds higher clocks um, and you're gonna get better performance all right the first screen you're gonna see on the score is our stock setting without any GPU overclocking and the next score that we see here this 12 354 is just with the, the um, fan profile and then the uh, the 12564 score is with the all the overclocking done and the fan profile and then the very last score you'll see on the screen is with the cpu overclocked as well um thanks for watching the video guys take care if you have any questions leave them in the comments below